Hello and welcome everybody to the Pixelogic ZBrush channel. My name is Ben and I got my tea here so I am all set to go. If you're new around here, this is the Pixelogic ZBrush channel where a bunch of different people like myself, digital sculptors, get to come in and hang out with you guys and do some cool sculpting. I am going to be working on a creature tonight from the incredibly talented Creature Box. You guys should definitely go follow them over on Instagram. So this is the little dude I'm going to be sculpting. Um, but yeah, we can go ahead and begin here in a minute or so. I'm just going to give a little bit of time for people to join in and I can open up my chat. Mordekainer, what's up, man? Nuclear Dan, how is it going? Still no ZBrush 2020, that is right, at least not yet. Last I heard it was releasing today. I, uh, I have not seen or heard uh, anything else. Nope, not yet. So uh, that will either be coming uh, sometime during my stream or sometime after. Uh, but I will unfortunately not be able to obviously play with the new version of ZBrush on the stream. I'm using the 2019 version right now. Uh, just because that is not out yet. If you guys want to check out some of my stuff, go on over to gumroad.com slash polygon where you can grab all my brushes, materials, courses, etc. Including my Appeal Academy course where uh, it is, go away, not only a course but a mentorship program where you can learn everything you need to know about creating stylized and appealing characters. If you guys want to learn more about this course, it's appeal.academy. And then of course, I am just Follygon on just about everything, so with a quick Google you can find my YouTube channel, uh, Twitch, ArtStation, etc, etc, pretty easily. Uh, but if nobody has any questions, we can go ahead and begin on our Creature Box sculpt. If you guys are watching from anywhere in the world that is not Cincinnati, Ohio, in the US, shout it out in chat, let me know where you guys are watching from. Uh, Shriker, what's going on man? Chaban, hello! And hello everybody else that is just creeping in the chat. Don't be shy, say hi. Uh, I got my little squirrel tea steeper. I'm actually gonna move him to the side because I'm getting a little bit lower on my tea and I don't want him going up my nose. Rocking the Earl Grey today. Love me some good Earl Grey. One of my faves. Awesome. So let's go ahead and begin here. Uh, I'm going to be explaining my process as best as I can as I go. Uh, but feel free to ask questions about this or anything else while I, while I am working. Uh, maybe we can, you know, instead of just dynamashing, let's play around with Sculptress. Let's switch it up a little bit and just go ahead and start pulling out the uh, basic shape of our little dude over here. Uh, so he's essentially just a cylinder with a little bend right about here. So a pretty simple shape, but we want to capture that. Uh, nice, crisp, clean shape as best as we can. So we'll probably start there for something really simple, and we'll probably uh, modify that as we move forward. You know what? Uh, I'll, I'll keep that on for, for just like a little bit longer while I um, come through here and do a couple other things. So let's just block out where his, uh, his mouth is going to be. And then, hey, that's looking pretty happy already. <laughs> And then we can go ahead and uh, split that and break that uh, up into two separate pieces so that we can open the mouth. So there are a lot of different ways that you can um, sculpt or create a mouth bag or a cavity for the mouth. One of my favorite ways, I'll show you right now, is to uh, split this in half. So I'm just masking this off with my uh, mask lasso brush, pressing Control w on my keyboard, and splitting that off. So now we have two separate meshes, and I can just use my move brush, as long as it doesn't have back face masking on. Let me turn on double so I can see inside of here as well. I can open that up a little bit better. So already we're starting to get that nice wide open mouth blocked in. He's got a really cool mouth shape. I, um, I like that a lot. He's got some cool teeth going on as well, so those will be fun to play with. Uh, let's go ahead and just do a quick Z remesh here on a couple of these parts. And that's very messy, so I'm going to run in groups loops on both of these uh, just so I get a little bit of a cleaner result along the edges. And we're not really worried about poly count or anything like that right now. We're just kind of moving along, blocking stuff out pretty quick. 
not a care in the world for topology. I'm going to turn that music down because that's kind of loud. It's bothering me, I know. It's definitely bothering somebody else. Wah! like so finicky here with the percentage. My uh, mouth sensitivity is like way too high for me to be able to do this. <laughs> One second. That's about where I want it. Hopefully that's a little bit better. Uh, New York City, what's going on? Cool work. Well, we're just at a cylinder right now, but I appreciate it. <laughs> what's going on, Chris? Watching from LA, very nice, over in Israel. Started learning ZBrush five to six months ago and having a blast. Awesome, welcome to the club. Chris, what's going on, man? Welcome back. Watching from Norway. Awesome. Uh, do I use this method for human mouth bags as well? Uh, yes, yes I do. I, I work in a very similar way. Um, let me... Ah, you know what? I'll, I'll show you guys real quick. Just because I like ya. Hold on. I'm working on a new uh, new character. I started this earlier uh, yesterday, I think. I haven't had very much time on her uh, at all, but shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, so this is gonna be kind of like a, a chill Zelda or something. I'm still trying to figure out direction and costuming elements and everything else. And there's a ton more work that I wanna do on this, but I wanted to show you guys the face really quick since somebody asked about the mouth bag. Uh, my face is very messy, very, uh, very dirty geometry going on here. Uh, but you can see that she has the same uh, thing going on here with uh, the mouth bag. So I'll just very quickly pry that open. That's a nice little pose, isn't it? Here, oh, ooh, that's very cute. <laughs> so yeah, very, uh, very similar technique that I'll do on my human faces as well. Uh, but yeah, that's something that I want to work on a lot more. Uh, but yeah, a little sneak preview for all you cool kids that come and join me on the stream. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna delete that and uh, we'll get back to our little ugly slug monster right here. Uh, how do you get the ZBrush upgrade? Uh, once it is uh, announced, once it is officially released, if you guys go on over to ZBrushCentral.com, there will be a post somewhere, probably right about here, I'm guessing, uh, in the featured area. And uh, that will give you all the information on how you can uh, upgrade to the latest version. Uh, let me go ahead and get some other pots and pieces on here. I'm feeling we need some eyes. Bloop. Aren't those cute? Oh, you know what? Uh, I actually don't like to use these eyes. I do that almost every time, but I know that I want to use the uh, point sphere here uh, because it has better geometry, better, uh, better for eyes. I guess in this case it doesn't really matter since I won't have like a pupil or iris, but normally I use these eyes because of the uh, the topology here. See that point, that um, hole? I use that uh, to help paint my eyes. It's very helpful to use that. Uh, so we'll just get these on here really quick, do a quick mirror and weld. Um, and yeah, we'll just get them into a rough position. We're not really too worried about proportions or accuracy right now. Uh, the biggest concern is just to get all the junk in there as quick as possible. Uh, probably a cylinder for those little antlers? Horns? I'm gonna go with antlers. Not exactly sure what those are supposed to be. But they're fun and they're there. So let's put them in there. <laughs> Uh, so it tapers down, so it's definitely smaller at the base. That's easy enough to do. Um, you liked my Androids? Well, thank you. I had a lot of fun working on uh, Android 17 and 18. Yeah, I believe. Unless you're referring to an actual robot creature or character that I made. They both should be in this post. I can't full screen like that. These guys. Well, that's maybe a little bit too big, actually. <laughs> These two guys. I, I assume that's what you're talking about. Yep. You can check those out over on my art station. Thank you, man. Appreciate that, though. They were a lot of fun to work on. All right. 
let's bevel the top of this using our Z modeler brush. Try to get that going the right way. I'll try one more time. And because it's not working, I will use a little trick here to insert a poly loop. So the uh, bevel operation, any operation with edges tends to be a little finicky because it's based on a couple factors of how close other edges are to it, from what I understand and from my experience with using the operation. So if you put another uh, edge loop kind of closer to it, it tends to work a little bit better. Uh, so we got that to work on our second try there, so that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, let's flip that. And I'm using local symmetry right now, which is very helpful for a few reasons, but it's letting me uh, scale concentrically around this one edge loop. Oh, why did that crease? That should not have creased. You know what, instead of deleting that, I'll just uncrease it, because uh, I can probably use the extra form. All right, we'll mess with those more in a second. I know they're not uh, very accurate right now, but that's okay. Uh, let's do those little back ears. Let's use a curve tube brush with a couple modifiers. I like the size modifier a lot. Ooh. Something like that. And for this, I'm going to use the as line function. Scoot on out here. So the as line function just draws a perfectly straight line for your curve, which can be useful in many situations. That's over here, as line, and I'm gonna turn that off now. I don't think I'll need the curve brush again, or any curve brush really for this character moving forward, but I like to keep all my uh, stuff on the default settings that I normally use so that when I switch to it later, uh, I know exactly what operation it's going to do. I could have lowered the curve steps on this, but because it's floating, it probably would have worked pretty well. But if it's uh, attached to, or if you're like snapping it to geometry, it does not typically work very well if you lower the steps. You end up getting some pretty weird stuff happening. Uh, all right, so we'll keep those really basic. Probably just scoot them in a hair and create the rest of that ear. Uh, let's say you have five layers on a model. Can you bake just one of those layers? You know, I honestly don't work with layers very often, so I'm not sure if you can bake just one layer. Someone in chat might know the answer to that uh, a little bit better than I do. Off the top of my head, I want to say that you cannot, but there might be uh, a workaround for that. Sorry, my... My squirrel tea steeper that I took out <laughs> started leaking all over my desk. Uh, can you talk about your background in art? Transpose instead of gizmo? Always Mordecano. Mordecano, you know this. Uh, do you know when the update will come? No, not yet. Uh, he doesn't want to tell us. I don't. I don't know. If I knew, I'd tell you. Shh, I'd tell you. No, I wouldn't. Uh, what's going on? 3D art with Javid. David, what's going on, man? You do things so fast, I don't have time to understand. I, I, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm actually going very slow. Uh, but if I do anything and you have a question about it, just let me know, man. Uh, and then back to, can you talk about your background in art? Absolutely. Absolutely. What is my background in art? Not much, um, really. I didn't really get into art until I was um, much older than most people are when they get into art. It wasn't until my early 20s. Trying to, whoop. so I've turned on back face masking here and I'm rotating that. It's a little trick if you've never seen that before, uh, but it's very handy as you can see. Uh, so I didn't get into art really until my uh, early 20s, as I said, and it is very hard for me to talk and sculpt at the same time. Uh, originally when I was in college, I wanted to get into uh, animation. I thought that that would be something that I would like a lot, 3D animation. Before that, I'd never really done a lot of drawing, a lot of 2D art, like really barely any experience at all. Um, 
I ended up really not liking animation too much. <laughs> uh, so instead, I fell into ZBrush and digital sculpting. And I remember seeing my first model, I think it was over on uh, CG Society, if I remember correctly. And um, when I saw it, I was like, I don't know how to do this or what I can even do with this for a career, but I want to do that. I want to do that. I was like, okay, I'm going to do that. So, uh, so I did it. I bought a couple ZBrush books and uh, went crazy with those, studying as much as I could. And uh, I was also in a, on a study abroad trip in Tokyo at the time, so I was studying Japanese at the same time because I was really into that. Uh, but I no longer, no longer study Japanese. Um, what else? What else could I say about my background in art? I gave myself a really arbitrary amount of time before I wanted to get a career in art, and I ended up uh, making that. So I started from zero, uh, and within two years I wanted to uh, have a full-time job, you know, using ZBrush, like, every day. Which I did achieve. I ended up working at a company uh, where I live locally, working on stuff for toys, amusement parks, uh, museum figures, and uh, special event figures, so, like, life-size stuff. So I have a very experienced background in working on uh, stuff that's going to be molded or uh, stuff for physical production or life-size figures, 3D printing, all that I have a ton of experience in. Uh, don't give yourself a weird arbitrary goal like I did. <laughs> Instead, um, you know, you, maybe if it like helps you, uh, get, gets you motivated or something like that, maybe it's good for something like that. But uh, typically arbitrary goals are, are not very helpful. I would avoid. All right. That's about it. That's basically my background in art. Not very uh, cool or glamorous or anything like that, but um, that's who I am. <laughs> uh, I only have ZBrush Core. There's definitely a lot of stuff you can do with ZBrush Core, and I know you can pay the... Whoa, well, that's weird. I know you can pay the difference uh, in versions to get the full release of ZBrush if that is something that you're interested in. The heck is that? Oh, you know what? Is that messing it up? That shouldn't mess it up. What's happening? <laughs> you know what? I'm guessing I'm running an auto groups operation, selecting this and clicking delete hidden. So normally when you press this button, it says there's nothing hidden. Uh, but the first time I clicked it, it didn't do that. So that tells me that I I, I was guessing, and I guessed correctly, that there was a floating piece of geometry there that was very, very small. And you can see now when I extrude, it doesn't do that. Let's see if this uh, piece down here does that. So nope, no little tiny floaters. That is so strange because I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, our normals, our normals are flipped here. So let me just flip them real quick. And we can get back to sculpting. Uh, okay, so there's some cool secondary forms happening up here in the head that I would like to uh, take care of. While possibly talking a bit more and answering questions. Hannibal, what's going on, man? Welcome back. Ziggurath, very cool name. How's it going, dude? When I try to move brush a nose from side view, I only affect the nearest edge of the area I mask. Any solution? That's a lot. Hold on, let me try to parse this. When I try to use the move brush on a nose from the side view, so from the profile. Oh, sorry, chat's moving fast. Uh, the nearest edge of the area I mask. It only affects the nearest edge. My guess would be that you have some form of auto topological uh, or auto masking feature enabled. Go under brush with the move brush selected, go under auto masking, and uh, make sure that you don't have back face masking turned on or topological masking turned on. These, these top two are fine, but uh, the rest of this should be off. See if that's what's going on. That would be my um, guess based on what you wrote there. It's really hard for me to tell without um, actually getting in there. If nothing works though, uh, save out your Z tool, restart ZBrush and load it back in and you're, you're, you should be good to go. All right. Increase the size of our eyes. 
Uh, this is just a bit more uh, narrow up top than what I have from the back of the head. So let's shrink that in. Just looking at that in uh, kind of the same view there. So I can uh, combine these pieces of geometry back together now. And I don't know, uh, since we don't have very much time tonight, we'll probably just be a little bit more chill in what we do and not uh, strive for perfect accuracy like we normally do. So we'll just kind of we'll take it slow. Slow ride. Take it easy. And let's go ahead and scale this. So that starts to shrink in, and then it starts to scale back out a little. Mine are a little bit long and uh, pointing the wrong direction here. His are towards the back of his head and pointing backwards. And I think they're a bit more uh, upright. Maybe something a bit closer to the ears as well. And it looks like the head kind of terminates a bit uh, earlier than what I'm doing here. So we should definitely lower that. Ooh, our geometry is kind of poking through there. That's not, oh, you know what? I know what's wrong. Sorry, let me turn on some stuff here. I uh, was using Sculptress Pro earlier, so for Sculptress Pro, I have to uh, turn on and off, or turn off back face masking, which is what was uh, wrong here. That's why that's freaking out. Mmm, that's gonna be annoying to fix. Instead of worrying about it though, let's just um, dynamesh this all together. We need to combine this eventually. See that? See how it's really thin there? Now that I have back face masking on, it'll be fine. All right, let's go ahead and clean this guy up a little bit. My Dynamesh resolution is a little too low, which is why we're getting that projection tiny piece there. And, um... We could remesh that, but let me just make sure we get a nice clean group right there. And we'll just Z remesh with keep groups turned on. Why don't you use the gizmo and use the other one instead? I prefer the transpose line, always have. I've used it um, way before the gizmo came out, and there's a lot of cool little hidden features in it. Uh, if you're interested in learning about those hidden features, you can look it up on YouTube. I have a cool video that goes through all of the uh, cool little secret techniques that you can do with it. What's up, George? General Kenobi. <laughs> Not quite. Um... A Black Friday sale. Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, that got a little tight in there, but you know what? I actually don't care. <laughs> All right, let's get back in here. And if I miss a question, I apologize. Just type it in chat again and I'll get to everything. 
All right. So he's got some cool secondary shapes down here. Uh, I think um, I think the face or the head slash neck in uh, proportion is a little bit too uh, small, or I'm sorry, a little bit too large. So I want to make uh, this bigger to offset that. Uh, all right, so we got a lot of the uh, facial parts and pieces in there. The little uh, cheek pouch kind of deal, like the stretching skin there, that's always something that uh, I found annoying when I was starting to uh, get into sculpting, but anymore, I'll show you guys a really easy way to do that kind of thing. Uh, here, we'll just duplicate this. Grab this guy. I'm just hiding a bunch of stuff. And uh, essentially what I'm going to do here is just grab any old piece of geometry, doesn't really matter what. You can use a cube, a sphere, anything. I'll just throw something in here really quick. Oops. And we'll just kind of stretch that out to fill in the gap. And then we can merge that down later. Oh, that curve is going the opposite way, so mine was going out this way, when in fact it needs to go this direction. Get that feeling nice and thin, so that it feels like it's this stretched skin here. Tight things are thin. And we can just delete the uh, excess that I inserted that on. There's a quick little way to just throw in a piece of geometry in there so that we got something. Uh, let's go ahead and paint this guy really quick just so we can get some basic colors rolling. And I really like this green. Nice green. Good job, Creature Box. Fill that in really quick and block out the rest of these colors. I'm going to inflate this. I think those are a bit thicker. What's great about uh, having this low res topology is that we can actually use that to uh, block out that color there, that line. What I can do is just mask off this top section. Ooh. Let's grab that off black, throw that in, something like that. Let's grab the eyes, and I'll just use a toy plastic for now. I want those probably to be black or very close to black. He's looking very cute. <laughs> oh, whoops. Uh, let me separate these. Uh, awesome, let's put some teeth in there. The uh, thickness of this, uh, the inner portion, will definitely have to increase. Uh, he's just uh, too thin on the inside. His insides are too thin. Uh, but color is great to get on there nice and early because it really helps you uh, figure out proportions. It has weight to it. Gosh dang it, a stupid thickness. I hate uh, working on things with thickness most of the time. Um, so we might have a little trick. I'm just trying to terminate that in a similar way to what they did. We might be able to get rid of some of that thickness in there to make it a little bit easier to sculpt on. Check 
the sound. With the Transpose Liner 3D Gizmo, you can control click and drag. Create a mask. And I am slowly weaving that <laughs> into the inside of our character. Ah, dang it. Get up there. All right, there we go. So I got some of that. I can just essentially remove that now, if I Dynamash or anything else, it'll get rid of that permanently. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a little bit of a cleaner selection. I don't know if that's gonna happen. Ooh, come on. Uh, it does not look like it. That's fine. That's close enough. Um, <laughs> he, he needs to be quite a bit more ugly, doesn't he? I wonder if I could just do a quick little whoop, little inflate there. One of those cool little hidden features with the transpose line. Alt, or I'm sorry, uh, just right click inside of that end point and you can inflate very quickly. Uh, okay, let's get some teeth in there next. So teeth should be pretty easy. Uh, what's really important about the teeth here in this instance though is that we get the interaction between the actual mouth and the teeth to uh, uh, really look good. Uh, for the teeth, I think I'll, I'll probably just create one tooth here really quick and then uh, we can reuse that tooth multiple times. So move brush with AccuCurve to pull up a sharp point. And they're not quite that sharp. Some of them are a little bit more sharp than others. Um, let's see. So I'm just doing this really quick with a sphere. Just trying to get something simple. Some of them are a little bit more uh, squared off. Which is fine. So something like that would be a decent starting point, uh, especially if we just make it super low poly real quick. Uh, do you do your UVs in ZBrush through UV Master or do you export as OBJ and unwrap elsewhere? Uh, if I was going to unwrap, I would not uh, probably do it in ZBrush, uh, but we're waiting on that peel UV. Uh, tool which was shown off um, within the past year, so that would be awesome to have that in the future. Uh, when will Shane and I be doing another uh, pass on our pass the sculpt thing? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I've not uh, spoken with Shane in a little bit. I know he's been really busy with moving lately. I will have to sync up with him and figure that out because we've only done two of three parts and we would like to uh, do that final part. I had a lot of fun working on those and I know he did as well. Looks like a Digimon, <laughs> it kinda does actually. For the get the back scales, like the little uh, little humps, we'll get those in there next. Uh, which Cintiq do you use and which rendering program do you use? I render in Blender mostly and uh, I just have a 27 inch Cintiq. Nah, dude, I never ignore the chat. Just focusing. Super. I'm always hyper-focused. Uh, Alright, so that's a good uh, starting point for our tooth. So I'm going to make this into an IMM brush. Uh, very simply. You know what, I'll close off the hole because I don't really like... Uh... Hey, you know what, I'm not going to make this into a brush. There's really not that many... I'll just, oh, I'll just move it around and duplicate it. It'll probably be just as fast. So much like anything else, when you start creating a new object, you just want to do a really basic pass on it at first. Start blocking in the major shapes. So we're just blocking in a few teeth really quick here. Okay. 
getting that basic position in there. Control clicking and dragging to duplicate. Scaling down. And just getting something really quick and simple in here. That little tiny one up there. And I'll just mirror these over to the other side once I get a few more. Pretty simple stuff for the block out. So right now they're all very similar. But uh, once we get all those in there, we'll start to make them a bit more diverse. I'm gonna make him wider. I don't feel wide enough. Not feeling thick enough. Triple C. Gotta get the triple C thick. That also comes back pretty far too. I feel like we could exaggerate that. Pull back on the mouth. A bit more. Get some more character in there. So uh, with the technique of control clicking and dragging these out, they uh, all have the same polygroup, which is why I am uh, doing this to select my objects really quick. We can uh, make some new polygroups for these really quick though, just by running an auto groups operation, which is down in the polygroups menu. Tool polygroups, auto groups. Very nice, very easy to use. And proportionally, because I guess we can start worrying about proportion slightly, uh, you can see that comes a little bit further down. So something like that looks pretty good so far. Let's uh, get those top rows of teeth and then we'll mirror them over to the other side. Subdivisions. What will solve my low thin? What will solve my low thin mesh without the thing dynameshing? Does the geo to close together? Uh, you could inflate your geometry. Uh, you could get rid of your thickness uh, for your mesh. So like this piece of geometry has thickness right now uh, because I gave it a mouth bag. Very uh, simply by um, uh, essentially just making the whole thing hollow. I would not recommend working with hollow meshes. Uh, sculpting on them is very difficult, uh, unless you're experienced in doing it. I would recommend closing up some holes and getting rid of thickness completely. Uh, working with uh, thick, solid, watertight meshes is pretty much the way to go for sculpting. Whoops, a couple more little tooths, tooths, and we'll be good to go. Wow, that's so tiny. Did my little Waluigi there. Wah. One more little tooth. So we got the uh, basic positions for those. Mirrored them over to the other side. And uh, we can start working on those a little bit more. But we need some more stuff, like our little back scales, as somebody was pointing out. Or ridges, fins, maybe they're fins. Is that what you would call those? I don't know. Uh, for these, I'm just going to uh, insert a cube. I think that would be the easiest way. They look very much like cubes.
Now obviously there's some additional secondary form stuff happening here to make those a bit more interesting. We'll just start with that. slice through those and I did that so that I could just have a little bit of some extra geometry to work with and start kind of pulling in on those this one's a bit more uh, narrow towards the top this one's a bit more parallel and this one kind of like tapers in towards the middle a little bit more than the others Let's just do a crease. A crease for us, please. All right. So those are very uh, simple, very basic right now. We'll probably come back to those later, though. Let's put a little bit of a scale up. Oh, our teeth changed color on us. Uh, now we got these like little speckles on him. Uh, probably just do that with some quick paint for now. We could turn those into actual geometry, which I often prefer to do. Uh, let's just like get some quick rough things on here so we can get a idea of what we're looking for. And we'll come back to those later. Just something really quick. So there's quite a bit of uh, additional form happening up here around the uh, corner of the mouth. We should be able to get some cool stuff happening there. I'm excited to, uh, to work on that area. Just some quick additional little chunks. Stuff that we can't see. All symmetrical right now, but not a problem. We'll do more with it later. But just to get some stuff on there. There's some more stuff going on with the green as well, like little tiny secondary speckles coming around here. Cool. All right. So next up, I say we start sculpting on the body a little bit more. Uh, and then start working on incorporating all this stuff together, slowly, one by one. Uh, I want to work on that corner of the mouth uh, a bit more, but before we do that, I want to get rid of the uh, most of the hollowness of this character. Uh, because it's not helpful. So I deleted some of the inner portion there. I would actually greatly like to delete more. <laughs> Control shift S X combination keys are not uh, shrinking and growing that. And I think it's because I deleted it. Let me see. Yes. Okay. So control shift S on your keyboard is a hotkey to uh, grow a uh, a selection or shrink a selection like this. S for shrink, X for grow. Uh, so then I can delete that and uh, close holes there. So now the whole thing is not hollow. So now when I'm sculpting around here it's not uh, affecting all of that and on the inside as well, uh, which is very frustrating to deal with. Uh, the same thing up here could be done, but instead of going through and deleting all that, I could just fill in a bunch of this really quick with a trim brush. I'm just holding the Alt key and getting rid of this. So this doesn't really aesthetically like change anything, right? But it makes it a whole lot easier to uh, sculpt and work on. So more of uh, some because of the way I hollowed this out quickly earlier. So there we go, that'll be much easier to work with and we can uh, paint out some of this and make that go away. Awesome, so 
let's go ahead and get some additional form. Crack a lacking on this guy. Make sure we didn't miss anything in chat, although I'm sure I did. Can subdivision solve my thin mesh issue? Probably not. Uh, I don't know how subdividing would make a mesh more thick. Uh, and how do you use subdivisions properly? Uh, there are a lot of different ways to use subdivision levels. I don't know if there's maybe a, a proper way I could say. Uh, I, I think, so you mentioned Blender. I think EV is the uh, real-time render. I, I think I don't use the real-time. I think I just use cycles. Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I believe it's cycles, though. A flip-top head? I don't know what a flip-top head is. Very pointy teeths? Yes, they are right now. They're all the same exact shape, actually. We'll come back to those, don't worry. We'll do some more stuff with our teeths. Whoa, nutty. Not what we wanted. Black teeth, best teeth? Maybe for you. I don't know where you live, but where I live, black teeth are not a good thing. <laughs> Uh, ZBrush 2019 is a slightly lower price until December 4th. Tempted to get it instead of ZBrush Core. So if you are um, thinking about purchasing one of the two, I would pretty much always encourage to get the, uh, the full version. Uh, the full suite. Maybe looking a little bit too wide now from the front view. Hmm. I might have to go back on what I did earlier and make them a bit more, a bit more thin. Yeah, that feels a bit better to me. I uh, was wondering if there was a way to use a localized Dynamesh, hence my question about subdivisions. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean about localized Dynamesh. Maybe you could be a little bit more specific or uh, worded in a different way. Uh, if you're talking about dynameshing in one specific area of a mesh, uh, you cannot do that. I would recommend splitting things up into uh, uh, separate meshes. You can subdivide a specific area with masks, though. If you use dynamesh, you must have your masks cleared. So I'm just sculpting up the form around the uh, corner of the mouth here just to get some more volume really quick, just using a little clay brush. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. I'm gonna do this all the way through here just to get a bit more volume real quick and get things a bit more messy. a little bit. So the areas around the teeth were definitely going to have to get some more uh, volume there. Way too thin. And our lips in general are way too thin. So I'll just take a move back base masking to all of that good stuff. we doing on time. We're gonna have to hurry up if we want to finish this guy. All right, so for the uh, kind of secondary forms happening down here, uh, oh, come back, come back to me. Also, we need to think of a name for this guy. If anybody's got any cool name ideas. Just blocking out some of this stuff really quick. Enough 
nothing too complicated. Whoa, I don't know when that happened. I want that to be symmetrical at first. Especially around here in the middle section, we will want to uh, break symmetry a lot. But like I said, we need to get this guy a bit more messy. I'm not gonna go for like perfect accuracy on all these forms just because we only have about an hour left. We'll just do this nice and quick. Get the general gist of the character. Maybe we can return to him later. But that's unlikely. <laughs> Always, you click that save button and it's it's gone forever. No more, no more Slugman. Johnny Slugman. Any any good names? Fluffy Howard, the co-grewer of gardens. Is that like eater of gardens or something? The garden destroyer. Destroyer of leaf worlds. It's definitely a ten cent word you're throwing in there. Any word if the update is live yet? Uh, I would check on the ZBrush Central website. There will be a post over there. Uh, but I have not heard anything. But I'm also streaming right now. So I'm not necessarily uh, checking on Twitter or anything <laughs> right now. Alright, so we're starting to get some of that nasty, foldy, good stuff going on. Uh, this area needs to push out a bit more. Uh, and let's combine these. So I'm going to combine the antler things down into the body, as well as the uh, ears. I'm sure those have some extra geo. And is there anything else I want to do here really quick? I don't think so. I think I'm good to merge these together. I'll just do this with a quick dimensor. All right, so all those are combined. I'll just run a quick dimesh on these. 500 is probably uh, more than enough. And by more than enough, I mean far too much. I don't really like having uh, RGB turned on for my smooth brush uh, most of the time, unless I'm actually painting and using that intentionally. <laughs> uh, it gets kind of a little bit weird later on when you're sculpting with paint on your character, as at uh, lower subdivision levels, it actually uh, messes a lot of stuff up, creates some artifacts. A lot of these uh, little you know, wrinkly, wrinkly crease things going on, doesn't it? I'm just gonna get uh, a bunch of this in here really quick. I need to turn down my lazy radius. Uh, and then for the eye, Need some more form around the eye, because right now it's just kind of sitting on top, isn't it? And that's kind of what it's doing in the concept, but that doesn't uh, that doesn't really make sense in 3D, does it? Let's just get a few more dried cracked lip things going on. Do some more stuff. Ah, it's looking fun. Uh, so for the area around the eyes, probably just build it up really quick with a sharp soft brush. I ha I'm actually having trouble seeing if that is positive or negative. It is positive. Okay. Sometimes based on your lighting, it's uh, 
little tough to see exactly what your brush is doing. Uh, very quick, just like blocking out a couple form changes, plane changes. A little less drastic than what I've done here, but that's okay. Uh, and I'd like to spend some time building up the area around the teeth. We should probably make our teeth uh, a little bit more accurate to what we need first. Fluffy, the conqueror of gardens. I like it. I like it. Fluffy it is. Although he's missing <laughs> a lot of fur to be fluffy. Makulis. Ooh, that's a fancy one. It's a Pixo conspiracy, so I can't play with the new version. Yes, you're all playing with the new version, um, but I'm not allowed. <laughs> I was actually, <laughs> excuse me, I was actually a part of the uh, beta team, so I've already been able to play with all the new features. Uh, I think you guys will be pleasantly uh, surprised and have a lot of fun with all the new features. There's a lot of cool ones. If you want to see the uh, full list, there is a feature list over on the... Uh, Logic website over on ZBrush Central and on their official website. Just kind of uh, doing some quick, like, secondary shapes here before I move on to the teeth. I know it's really messy, but that's actually what we want. We will smooth quite a bit of that out later, but I just needed something down there to kind of break up the silhouette. Uh, okay, so back to our teeth, our teethers. Teefer Sutherland. Oh, wow, I butchered that. That was a bad joke anyway. That's okay. <laughs> uh, so this tooth is definitely uh, not very pointy uh, towards the top. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna mask off the top and just widen it out. Widen and flatten it. And these are looking pretty sharp here, but uh, this tooth is like way too big, right? Make sure local symmetry is on when you scale across the uh, symmetrical axis because it'll zoom in towards the middle like that. That's never fun, we don't want that. This guy, he is quite a bit smaller. Got a little Australian there for a second. And this tooth is not uh, very flat either. Or it is very flat as well, sorry. Not very sharp either. Some of these teeth have this really nice uh, curve going on, which I'm digging a lot. Uh, so let's try to get that in there really quick too. I don't wanna spend a ton of time on the teeth because they're not you know, the main thing that we wanna work on. I wanna work on sculpting the body a bit more. But we still have a decent chunk of time left, so I'll take a couple minutes here to more tweaks. I'm playing with it secretly. Yes. Maybe not playing, but more so testing. Uh, for those that didn't see, uh, this is the uh, creature that I made during the beta test. The little dragon. Colorful creatures. And I say creatures because I made a bunch of different variations. So there's a close up on the face. And then I did a bunch of different color variations. Uh, there's a new uh, tool that makes it very easy to uh, uh, work with colors in ZBrush uh, and create uh, a lot of cool masks uh, uh, based on uh, color selections that I really like. Uh, and you guys will see that 
see you soon, or go check out the feature page, and you'll see it. It's a very welcome feature. It would be very nice if I had it right now, and I could use it on this guy to create some different masks with my poly paint. But alas, not yet. Soon enough, though. I probably won't download it tonight because it's getting pretty late here. Oh my gosh, it, it actually snowed here. I don't know where everybody's from and what the weather's like where you are, but it doesn't normally snow here in November. It does get very cold. It's 14 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I don't know what that translates to in Celsius off the top of my head, but it does translate to cold. That's what it means. Very, very cold. Lots of snow. Not very fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's good for an, uh, a rough second pass on these teeth. Uh, what I want to do next is kind of build up the area around the, the teeth. And there are a couple different ways I could do that. Uh, one way that I like uh, kind of cheesing it a little bit uh, is to duplicate your teeth, inflate your teeth. that geometry to essentially uh, create uh, gums around your, your mouth. Uh, so I'm gonna merge that into my head, merge it down, or entire body character here. Uh, quick Dynamesh, I lowered the resolution so we shouldn't be quite as high as before works and then uh, essentially what I'm gonna do is just delete all the, uh, the extra the extra junk you can see that I'm actually selecting or deselecting some of the stuff in the back that is okay we'll get that back in a moment There we go. All right, whoops. So whenever you Dynamesh, whatever color you have selected, it will uh, infill that color on your geometry. And that is not what we wanted there. Actually, it is what we wanted up top, though. Ooh, quick little paint. Uh, we can turn everything back on now. And now you can see the basis or uh, starting point for our gums, for our uh, teeth here. So you definitely want the uh, shape to have kind of like that curved or um, uh, like socketing in kind of type feel. So pushing up in the middle area to kind of match what we're seeing in our reference, we'll achieve that. Slotting in, not socketing in, slotting in. That's what I meant. Um, getting creepy with details. No, he's still cute, come on. Old Fluffy here. <laughs> and Genetics, what's going on, man? Welcome back, how you doing? Um, how do you select colors? Uh, so with the new tool, it makes it very easy. Uh, like I said, you can go check it out on the feature list. I don't have it right now because this is 2019, not the newer 2020. Uh, but you can still actually mask with poly paint right now under tool uh, masking or poly paint uh, in the masking menu it's masked by color and there are a few different options in the future version there will be another option here uh, and it's located in a couple other places as well uh, but for instance if I wanted to map uh, mask by hue I could do something like that or if I wanted to mask by uh, intensity so intensity is value, uh, so it's masking off the darkest areas there. So if I were to press Control W, it would polygroup those uh, areas that I had masked. Uh, and then of course, mask by saturation as well. Uh, but in the new release, uh, there's a lot more power with it. So you can select specific colors and uh, change hue, value, saturation, all sorts of really, really cool stuff. Um, it's a lot of fun to work with. I think you guys are gonna enjoy it quite a lot. 
and if you guys want to learn more about the features, make sure you come back for some future streams. I stream on Tuesdays, same time as right now, so 3 p.m. Pacific. I'm in the Eastern time zone, so that's 6 my time. Uh, or on this Thursday, this Thursday and next Thursday, the uh, dev team for ZBrush is uh, doing some of their streams, and they're showing off uh, all the new features as well as some cool stuff with workflows. So definitely check those out as well. All right. Um, all right. So we've started to build up those secondary forms a little. Very, uh, very messy, but that's okay. That's kind of what I wanted. Um, hmm. Let's do a couple more things here. I'm not gonna get this perfect, like I said, because I don't think we really have enough time. Get what we can here. My resolution's a bit low, but increasing that will help a lot too. Just want to inflate a little bit of this. And then uh, I'll come through with a smooth brush later. Eh, it might work a little bit right now. You know what, it's actually not that bad. Let's start to fade that out. Worry about edge quality. If uh, you don't know what edge quality is, uh, it's why we have pressure sensitive pens. So when you draw out your little stroke here, like this, that's not what we want. That's not what we want with a stroke, right? Uh, that looks really lame and boring. Instead, you wanna come in like as if you're drawing a line in 2D. A little slow and gentle at first and then you know slowly build into it and then fade out so light harder and then light and fade it out just like that or if you're maybe a little bit more skilled you can do a little bit of a better job <laughs> um, download speed will be a little bit slow absolutely yeah, initially with so many people trying to I'll jump at once. Um, your trunk froze to your back window last night. I'm trying to imagine how your trunk freezes to your back window. Isn't your back window attached? Well, I guess it's not attached to your trunk, depending on what type of vehicle you have. He was so cute 30 minutes ago. That's not very nice to him. He's still really cute. What are you talking about? <laughs> he is still adorable. Uh, I wanted to merge actually a couple more things together um, before I remesh this guy. So let's get these. These are a must combine. And, ooh, you guys hear that? My ankle just popped really loud. Uh, let's merge these down as well. We'll just merge all this stuff together. Ooh, it might be easier to poly paint this right now while I still have that split off. Like I said, uh, Something really quick though. There's also some secondary forms on these shapes that I'd like to get in. Uh, actually, it's going to be much easier for me to do that with that missing. So, very quickly, 
we'll just kind of build up a couple additional forms here and here as well. So just using a quick clay brush stroke or two around these areas to get some additional volume. Kind of like uh, skin folds a little bit. I'm intentionally being a little bit messy here. Try to get some uh, Bob Ross ha happy accident kind of deal. I think he's the guy that always says that. like this looks like your grandfather dude you need to have a talk with your, your grandfather about some like moisturizer or something I don't know if moisturizer is enough at this point to help him <laughs> if he looks like this all right now we can uh, merge all this stuff together with a quick dynamesh adorable creepy yeah it's a fine line isn't it it's like a pug like nobody thinks pugs are actually cute right Pugs are an abomination on this planet. <laughs> go, yes, go grab some food. Don't starve yourself watching zebra streams. That doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> Will I Z remesh it? Yes, I'm about to actually. The eyes are a little bit taller. Then they are uh, um, wide. They're not quite perfect spheres. They are also not sticking out quite that far. Just adjusting that a little bit. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and zero mesh this guy. So look at that. He's very, very uh, messy and high poly right now. Not really that high poly. He's a million uh, polygons, but uh, we can very easily lower that with the power of zero mesh. Uh, I want to do a quick thing. I wanted to paint the inside of his mouth black so that we can't see in here. Some of this doesn't need to be black. Some of this is okay to be green or pink. Like this area is actually probably fine. Yeah, probably overdid it just a hair. I essentially just don't want you to be able to see the uh, bottom of the character, really. And I really don't want you to be able to see in the mouth. Hey, you know what? I lied. Let's just make it all black. Screw it. I changed my mind. <laughs> It'll kind of be like a shadow, painted shadow. I actually don't recommend hand painting shadows unless uh, you 
like really going for that hand painted feel. It's very easy to overdo. I think we'll be okay though for this. I just don't want you to see inside the mouth essentially. So we focus on the outside a bit more. All right, let's uh, Z remesh him and tweak some proportions and stuff along the way because uh, there's some stuff that needs to be fixed. Uh, cool. Duplicate him. And uh, I don't really want to set up any polygroups for this. I'm just going to run a default Z remesh. For this, 5,000 is probably enough with symmetry turned on. So we'll go ahead and let that think for a minute while I catch up on chat. Sculpture is more important than food. I don't know about that. <laughs> Remember to save. Ah, who needs saving? Come on, that's what quick quick save is for. So uh, the only reason I'm z remeshing and projecting here is to make this a little bit easier to work with. So subdivisions are uh, much easier to use uh, to go back and make uh, scale changes. Also, the geometry is easier to sculpt on, typically when it is uh, clean, uh, clean quads. It's easier to um, have some nice flow there with your topology. How do you put a flat color on the background and keep it forever? Like every time you open the program, it'll have the flat color instead of the gradient. Yeah, that's really easy to do actually. Uh, document, uh, see this range slider? This is the gradient, so you just turn that all the way down. Uh, you choose whatever color you want and click this back button. That will uh, set your background color. And then uh, uh, if you toggle this and click on new document, it'll make sure it fits your entire screen, which is very nice. And then you just click on save as startup doc, and that will always be your document. Um, you might wanna make sure that there's nothing on your canvas though, because it might uh, flatten that. I'm not sure if that's the case though. I don't think it is, uh, but just save as startup doc. It's that button right there. Everything is fun and laughs until ZBrush crashes. I, in, in a very long time, I have not had ZBrush crash without a quick save. Uh, the only time recently that that happened to me was because my power went out, uh, so it didn't have a chance to quick save. And I only lost like 15 minutes of work, so it wasn't even that big of a deal. Uh, I wanted to pull out the mouth a bit more, like tilt his head back a little bit, but everything else will need to move as well. I don't know if I really care that much though. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna turn off symmetry and uh, start sculpting on some of this stuff down here. So uh, because this is all uh, very symmetrical, uh, just a quick little smooth through there. And now uh, we'll start breaking uh, symmetry here. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be uh, super uh, intentional with these strokes. You could come back through here and inflate uh, some of this. I don't really like the inflate brush too much though, so I tend to just stick with uh, a clay brush, my personal clay brush. Uh, these are all like very uh, similar right now very bad when everything looks uniform, especially on an organic shape, like a fold. Uh, so it's best to have, you know, some be more thick and thin. It's also really important that uh, we don't have all these parallel lines, because that starts to look really bad too. So 
So I'm going to cheat <laughs> with a mask and just do something like that. Start bunching that up a little bit more, which starts to add some cool flavor. Uh, another thing we could do is just grab a move brush and start um, breaking up the silhouette just a tad more. I know he's kind of like chopped off back here, but uh, even a little bit helps. How does quick save work exactly? Uh, it's this button at the top of your screen. You click it and it will save a file in a specific folder on your computer. Uh, by default, that's located in your user, uh, user settings or something on Windows. Uh, user public, public docs for ZBrush. So user public docs. Uh, and this is where they're actually all stored. Nice butt right here from that character I showed you guys earlier. <laughs> Um, but yes, they're all in there. And if you want to change your preferences on that, you can do that under preferences, quick save and change the duration at which it saves. So for instance, uh, if you set this to 20, it will save every 20 minutes while you're working. Uh, rest is if you're not touching the application, it'll quick save after 20 minutes. Uh, this is the default. I find that 20 minutes tends to be uh, pretty good for uh, what I'm working on. Enough that it's like not annoying while I'm working, but also enough that if I were to somehow lose progress, uh, at the absolute most, I'd lose like 19 minutes, which is nothing. That's very easy to make back. And you'll probably do it twice as quick because um, you already did it once. So it's not super hard to do again after you understand what you're supposed to do a little bit better. Um, that's looking pretty gnarly down there. Uh, we could continue to work on that, but I don't know. Kind of want to move on to some other stuff here. I'm just kind of pinching and refining some stuff to sharpen up the, the form. And I'll do a quick little cleanup on this. Get that feeling a bit more fleshy. That's kind of why I kept it a little messier at first. So that when I came back through, we get some, uh, some happy accidents, right? That's looking pretty cool now. Obviously not the exact same forms we have in our concept, but it has the same basic feel. Uh, we haven't done anything with these on his back in a minute. <laughs> They're just still cubes hanging out back here. Uh, let's definitely uh, work on that. I'm gonna add some taper. gave a task to a bunch of other pros, would you all come up with different solutions? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, like, whenever I have a problem, I'm like, well, there's like 10 different ways I could do this. So how do I go about it this time? What's the best way to tackle it this time around? I, I showed a technique for creating the mouth bag of this character earlier, the open mouth. I don't always do it that way. Sometimes I just like sculpt it and push it in and close up the mouth around it. Like, it just, it depends. But yeah, everybody would, I think, come up with a, a very different, whoa, <laughs> there we go. That's very nice, nice little inflate on him. He's looking extra cute now. <laughs> I did not mean to do that, I meant to inflate on these. I think I uh, scaled him too, I did. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah, everybody would definitely come up with uh, different ways to come to the same end point and goal. Which is cool, honestly. So many different ways to do everything. 
which can also, I guess, feel a little overwhelming, I think, for some. Um, what else do we want to do to our little dude here? Get some subdivs on those teeth and we can start um, sharpening some of those edges up a bit more. The five black dots. These? Dude, I don't even notice any of this. Like when I am sculpting, and um, like worried about what's important, the quick stuff that like is just there, I don't care about. You really, and honestly, you have to get comfortable with that kind of stuff because when you are sculpting and working on um, like say a face for instance, and you're in the construction type area of blocking out and just figuring out the, the most basic forms, it's really important that you're just comfortable working with things looking awkward. <laughs> Uh, because they're going to look pretty awkward uh, for a while uh, while you're just kind of laying the foundation for everything that you're going to do. Uh, it's just something you got to get used to. And honestly, the more comfortable and confident you are with that stuff, like, uh, the better and faster you will work. I should turn symmetry back on. I actually don't know if this is completely symmetrical anymore up here. should be. I think the only place I broke symmetry on was uh, the belly so far. Ah, yeah, that's kind of asymmetrical there. Yeah, so that's kind of screwed up a little. We could make the teeth asymmetrical, but that sounds like a lot of work to do here with what little time we have left. Where's my paintbrush? I just wanted to sharpen up a couple of ridges really quick. Uh, hey, watched your Halloween collab sculpt. It came out super nice. Well, thank you. Thank you, Floden. Appreciate it. And welcome. Welcome to the stream. couple of these. There is so much more we could do on this guy. There's always more to do, right? Nothing's ever perfect. Only abandoned. <laughs> track of anatomy I only know the ear and deltoid <laughs> that's pretty good ear and deltoid what a combo <laughs> what's funny is that there's so many different parts of the ear like the tragus anti-tragus the, the fl fling a ding I don't even know all the parts of the ear unless I'm like looking at a reference I might be able to know them then whoops Oh no, wait, that is what I wanted. Sometimes with this material, it's a little tough to see what's uh, going on with the mesh. Like in a shadowed area, is it a, is it a concave surface or a convex surface? And that's why I really like my sculpting material, my polygon clay. This is um, a zebra paint material, which is really nice. It's really nice material. It's just kind of hard to see. Poly paint doesn't make it very easy either doesn't help in that area for sure. Uh, I'm just tightening up some of these creases very quickly. Like I said, a little bit easier to see here with my material.
I'm gonna hang out up in the corner for a minute. Until I get in here. Let's go. <laughs> I hate when I join like a, a stream and I see that somebody zoomed in really close on something and I'm like, yeah, but what are you, what's the whole thing look like? Well, here you go, upside down a little bit, but uh, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, ears are a pain in the butt? Oh, dude. You know what makes ears so much easier? Having this brush that I made that you can get on my gum road. Wow, fancy. Where is it? Folly, insert ear. Look, we got a real human ear, a tune ear, an aminal ear. Wow. You'll never have to sculpt ears again. You, that's a lie. You will still sculpt ears, but yeah. It's just an insert brush that inserts a nice, uh, realistic human ear for you as a good uh, starting point, or maybe you just want to use that for like the whole thing. <laughs> but it has like a tune here as well. Uh, I have a bunch of uh, really nice insert mesh brushes over on my Gumroad, if you guys are interested. Gumroad.com slash polygon. Uh, I believe that ear brush is just in my basic brushes. Let me double check that. Yes. I also have some eye uh, and eyelid stuff. Uh, but actually my favorite uh, out of those insert brushes that I have is my hand and foot. I recently added a foot to this, so for those that actually do have my brushes, because I know probably a few of you do, uh, the foot is a free upgrade. Uh, so it's just like a really nice basic hand. Uh, and those do have subdivision levels on it, like that ear does have subdivs on it. It makes a very nice, good starting point for a uh, ear, or like I said, if you want to just like use that, it's fine. Yes, just a very nice, clean, simple hand. Uh, and also, I like to keep the fingers separated on my hands so that I can uh, manipulate them and make changes to them uh, while I'm sculpting, and then I combine them later. So like if I have a really thick hand, for instance, I'll work on one finger and um, make maybe that finger like really thick and big, and then I'll duplicate that across while also, of course, making changes to the hand because I don't think that super thick finger would fit in there. Uh, I wanted to work on a few more secondary shapes here. Uh, that will be a lifesaver. Yeah, it's, uh, that's why I made it. <laughs> I made it for myself, but uh, you guys can use it as well. Um, it's a very nice, nice thing to have. Uh, I made them because I got so tired of sculpting things like ears uh, over and over again because oftentimes most ears uh, look very, very similar, right? Uh, and if they don't, you still got a nice base to start from. Uh, you can see that the material's messed up here. That's just a very common thing. We'll just reapply our material to fix that. Cool. Um, we have like a half hour left, so there, there's actually plenty of time for us to do some, some cool stuff here. Uh, I wanted to show you guys one thing with Transpose Master uh, because it's very, very nice to have. Uh, clear canvas, there we go. Uh, so it looks like he's tilting his head back more, so his face is kind of facing forward, uh, whereas it looks like he's got more tilt. And it looks like this part of his mouth in the front is coming forward a bit more, so I could you know, individually come in here and, you know, pull out and make some changes to each part one at a time. But that sounds like a pain in the butt. So uh, what we can do is use the Z plugin Transpose Master T-Pose Mesh. This will take all of our sub tools, even though we don't have very many, uh, and combine them all temporarily. So they're all one mesh here. And essentially what I'm going to do is just make a mask like this. Blur my mask and rotate the head and everything else back. I'm also going to, whoa, that's poking through there. We don't want that. Uh, I wanted to like pull out a little bit. I don't want to do this on the eyes, obviously. I want to keep the eye shape that we have. 
So just kind of pulling out in that area. We'll turn on perspective here. Kind of push in there. And just make uh, some very small tweaks to this area. So when you do this kind of stuff, you want to make sure, you know, it is a low poly mesh, but you want to make sure that you're using a big move brush because uh, it's a small move brush and you'll end up kind of warping stuff like the shape of your teeth. So a big one, uh, it's not quite as uh, bad. that we're looking at this from like all the extreme angles like top down and bottom up to make sure that it's reading well from all sorts of different angles because we are 3d artists right can't just worry about one angle unfortunately unless maybe you're working on something specifically for like an illustration ah cool that is feeling uh, quite a bit better to me there And uh, with Transpose Master, it does everything at the lowest subdiv uh, when it imports it, but when you uh, export it back out, like what I just did, uh, it will do everything uh, on every subdivision level, so it'll calculate it all for you. And there we go. Some nice changes there. Absolutely, David. You have a good night, man. Catch you uh, next time, hopefully. Uh, can you share your ZBrush theme colors? Uh, I don't have it as like an easy to download just the colors. Uh, I have my UI on my Gumroad though, somewhere. Which includes my hotkeys as well. So that's on my Gumroad, but I don't have just like the, the color file. A little tummy because he eats too much. Yeah, just a little, a little bit of a tum. Not too much. Don't want to overdo it. He does, he does, doesn't he? Like looking at that curve, the very slight S curve. I've probably uh, exaggerated it too much, but I don't know. I kind of like it. I'm making all these big changes on the lowest subdiv, obviously. Uh, I'm just looking at the distance from the eyes to the top of the head, and it looks like mine is um, still too tall. I don't want it to like feel flat on top of the head, though. at that from the silhouette. Uh, let's go ahead and break uh, symmetry on this a bit more because uh, it uh, feels obviously very stiff, right? Uh, so let's do that a little bit uh, and give him uh, some twist. Probably the best way to do that would be to go back into Transpose Master. One more time, do a couple twisty turnies very technical sculpting term. Don't question that. <laughs> oh, did that mask? I think so. Who, <laughs> who is Big Timmy? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, man. <laughs> Uh, proportions of the ear. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Uh, all right, so I'm going to, like I said, add a little bit of twist there. Let's 
kind of rotating him. Trying to uh, twist them a little bit more towards the camera than what we have in the illustration. If anything, we can still kind of put them at a similar angle. And I'll, I'm just going to add some slight asymmetry to things like the ears and uh, antlers. Yeah, we're all we're all dying to know who uh, what was it? Big Timmy. We're all dying to know who Big Timmy is. Ah, twerking instead of twisting. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'll turn up the music and we can get some sick jams for this slug Digimon, Slugamon. Who likes the sound of that? <laughs> You always got to make your characters dance. It's part of the process. Just a little bit more a sim on the antler thing, my jigs up top, and we'll T-pose them back. So I didn't want to make like a huge change there. So just uh, a few small tweaks. But because I've done this now, uh, things like my teeth and my eyes are no longer symmetrical. So if I want to make more changes to those, I will have to work on them uh, individually and symmetrically. think I think I think I'm gonna redo a lot of this paint because while sculpting a lot of it's got gotten uh, very smudged here so I think that'd be a good idea quick. You've grown up on Pokemons? Pokemons forever? Dude, I love I love me some Pokemons. Not a huge fan of some of the newer stuff, but all about the Pokemons. Dude, who isn't about the Pokemons at this point? It's like the number one, uh, IP in the world. It's above uh, Star Wars in terms of net worth. It's above Disney, like uh, most of Disney stuff. Or I guess all of Disney stuff. But uh, not combined, obviously. some of this stuff now too we could also use like a mask or an alpha to like drag that out but just doing it by hand is fine really quick wow what a great description on big timmy i'm blown away we need to delete everything and start over well it only took like an hour and a half to get here, so <laughs> it wouldn't be too hard. All right, let's repaint in very quickly. Oh, 
That was a bit weird. A bit glitchy. <laughs> Starting to rotate while I was painting. Kind of freaked out on me. Brush monkey. Yeah, that's all. That's all sculptors really are. 2D artists are just pixel pushers. 3D artists are just polygon pushers. Digital monkeys, so to speak. What's the thing about putting a bunch of monkeys in a room with a typewriter? Eventually, you'll get Shakespeare. That's pretty much how I work. <laughs> Eventually we'll get something good. Might take forever. We didn't spend too long on this guy though. I was hoping that we'd have the new version of ZBrush by now so that we could play with a lot of the new features, but no worries, we'll definitely be doing that next week. Next Tuesday. Look forward to that. And then like I said, of course everybody else will be streaming here on the Pixelogic channel showing off a lot of the new features. I will be next Tuesday at 3 Pacific. So swing on by if you are around. Or uh, if you are joining us a little bit late and want to check out the full process here, of course everything gets uploaded on YouTube. You can find my YouTube channel by just searching Polygon. I think there's actually a link somewhere in my banner as well. All right. I would like to uh, work on this area around his face a bit more. Starting to kind of plus up these forms. Right now they're like just really sketched in. I really like... Uh, brushes uh, similar to the damn standard brush that carve in, but you can't really just leave it at that. It tends to um, you know, look very awkward and simple. So you need to come back through and inflate a lot of that form somehow. Uh, in this case, I'm just coming through with a quick uh, clay brush stroke or two to make the shapes feel a bit more organic. What's great about uh, clay brushes is that you can uh, attach alphas to them to give you a little bit of some nice texture to uh, kind of break up a bit of that uh, awkward inorganic feeling. Uh, clay brushes are actually great for sculpting texture for a lot of things, like tree, uh, tree bark and that sort of stuff as well. It's really nice. Just kind of depends on how you use it. In this case, I am adding a little bit more volume and then going back over it and uh, smoothing out some of the uh, more light transitions. So it's pretty subtle, a little bit more uh, or a little bit less subtle over here. But over here in the middle of the face, I don't want these like huge wrinkles, not around the eyes, really. Mm. Ramsey's, yes. The wall thickness analyzer is awesome. Yes, you're gonna love that, man. Dude, I wish... I wish we had that <laughs> way back when I started working on toys. It's been so nice. But yeah, it's gonna be a game changer just to directly do that in ZBrush. A lot of really cool stuff coming out with this release. Uh, again, for those who uh, want to check out some of the new features, go uh, to zbrushcentral.com, ZBrush Central, uh, and there is a forum at the top showing off all the uh, awesome new features. And then, like I said, we'll be showing it off uh, here on the stream as well. 
or you could just download the update yourself and get sculpted. Uh, will I do another uh, sculpting Pokemon from memory? Uh, yeah, probably, uh, eventually. I don't know when. I don't, like, have it on my calendar or anything. Uh, but I had a lot of fun uh, doing that, so I think that would be uh, something that would be fun to do again in the future. And maybe it won't be a Pokemon, per se. Maybe it might be something else, but I do like Pokemon a lot, so um, there's a pretty good chance <laughs> that there will be more of that in the future. Alien Slug, yeah, dude, of course. Uh, by Creature, Creature Box. For those who aren't familiar, go give them a follow over on Instagram. Maybe if you're feeling extra generous, check out mine while you're there. But definitely go follow Creature Box. Dude, I think it's actually a team of two people, if I remember correctly. I might be thinking of someone else. Uh, but extremely talented either way. Really cool work. And lots of awesome concepts if you're looking for some cool creatures to uh, to sculpt. <laughs> yes, using live booleans um, to uh, get an idea of a slice, absolutely. I've used that so many times as well. Um, or another 15 minute challenge. Oh gosh. <laughs> I uh, get scared just thinking about that. That was like so stressful. That was kind of part of the fun, I guess. The 15 minute challenge. Uh, actually what I would like to do, I'm sure a lot of you have seen like a similar thing where 2D artists will do like a uh, paint this in uh, like an hour, a half hour, 10 minutes, and then like one minute. I think that would be cool to try uh, with sculpting, but I'd probably have to lengthen the times uh, because sculpting something in one minute would probably not result in <laughs> much, <laughs> which maybe is kind of part of the fun of the, the challenge, but that's something I would like to try in the future. I think that would be a lot of fun. Fixy fix all the broken paint. I don't actually know how this happened. What? Kind of looks like a little, little pupper. Like I could see this guy being an alien's little pet or something. We should turn off perspective. Do a decent looking sculpt you need like an hour or so um thank you Bert appreciate it man yeah for sculpting you definitely <laughs> you definitely need a little bit more time than a 2d illustration I could probably get the gist of something though, in general, in like 15 minutes. Very rough, of course, but that's what I did in uh, that video that, uh, I think it was Jamie? No, George. George was uh, talking about if I'd do another one of those. Just gotta work super, super fast. and some extra speckles around real quick. Just finishing up as much as we can. Oh gosh, because <laughs> we have like five minutes left. 
That's okay. I don't think anybody's streaming after me either way, so I don't think we're gonna be rushed out of here or anything. So we'll hang out for a little bit longer. Shh, don't tell. Don't tell on me, guys. be a good stopping point honestly it's like I think some of that uh, green faded over so it's a little bit uh, more difficult to see and honestly it looks like this is more saturated or just darker it definitely is but maybe I could just um, very quickly do something like this the difference there. What I should have done initially, so if I had the, um, the new poly painting tool, it would be really easy for me to select this color and poly paint uh, and change that. Like that is what the new feature is for. Uh, but with the current tool set, I can do it. It's a little bit more tough because I can't select this specific green color. Uh, but I can, just to show you an example, mask by color, mask by saturation, do, 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 do. What did that grab? Okay, so that did a little bit. So I've definitely got some of that. So you can see that I could, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not great though, right? So with the new features, it's gonna be so much easier to do that kind of thing. Uh, I think you guys are gonna really like that. I'm very excited to uh, have that to play with a little bit more consistently. Um, yeah, I don't really think I like the uh, the darker, just because we didn't transition that down properly earlier. So now it just kind of stands out really awkwardly, and it draws the attention away from the face a little bit too much. So uh, I, I will avoid that for now. Uh, and the fact that you can kind of barely see these is fine with me. Honestly, we don't need them to uh, stick out very much. Awesome. Well, I think that is going to be where uh, we end it for tonight. So we did end up getting quite a lot done in just a couple hours there on this guy. We got a lot of paint and some cool work on him. Uh, like I said, I'll be streaming next Tuesday. Same time, same place. If you guys want to check out more of my stuff, you can check out my Gumroad for my courses, brushes, materials. Gumroad.com slash Folygon. I am also Folygon on just about everything else. If you guys want to check out uh, my YouTube or all my work on my art station or Instagram or whatever. Uh, Appeal Academy, Appeal.Academy I should say, is my main course and uh, mentorship program. If you guys are interested in learning more about creating stylized and appealing characters. Uh, but with that, unless we have any last minute questions, um, awesome, cool. Well, I'm not seeing anything left, more to keep. <laughs> Mordekainer saying, a few minutes left. Please don't leave us. Yes, I'm leaving. I'm leaving a little bit early. I should have turned on like another light. I'm noticing. I'm just now looking at my camera. We're a little bit dark in here. All right, with that, you guys have a fantastic rest of your night. We look forward to.